Hey, hey, Denver. Hey, hey, world. Happy MLK Day. The next time you see me, people will be sending congratulations to Joe and Kamala, while Melania Trump will be sending Donald his commissary. I'm Damian Dane, and this is The Sesh. Yes, Donald has less than 48 hours left in office. 48 hours left in the White House. Melania Trump is said to be so confused on what happens next that she packed up all of the Christmas decorations and set her wardrobe on fire. Donald is expected to issue about 100 pardons before he leaves office, which is coincidentally the same number of hairs he still has left on his head. Yeah. Look who's talking. I get it. And supporters keep sending money. I'll never get it. Do you think he's going to pardon you? He can't give you back your freedoms. They haven't been taken away. I keep asking myself, what on earth do you want? Trump supporters, what do you want from this country that it hasn't handed you already? You can vote freely. You have all of your guns. And no, after 40 years of the Republican Party scaring you, we're still not going to take them. Well, why you think we don't have them, too, is beyond me. No one is forcing you to get abortions. No one is forcing you to vaccinate your kids. No one's keeping you from going to church and judging everybody who doesn't. There are no mask laws. The police aren't and will not ever be fully defunded. Your children are safe. You can go to whatever bathroom you want, and I'm pretty sure the QAnon shaman finally got his precious organic food. You say you're fighting for your freedoms, but what freedoms don't you have? And don't talk to me about fighting for freedom until you've had to hold the hand of a person dying, knowing that their family would keep their lover from attending their funeral because they couldn't get married. It just baffles me. What else can we get for you? What else can we bring for you next on a little platter? Do you want us to publicly take things away from black and brown people so you can giggle about it while you stick your parlor dildo up your freshly bleached asshole? Maybe a reality show where instead of giving somebody a house, we take theirs away and put their family on a travel ban. Maybe utilize the kids that have still yet to be reunited with their families in a craft show about the things you can make while you're locked in a cage. There was an insurrection because they're scaring you. They're scaring you. They're scaring you. They're scaring you. They're using fear to keep you ignorant the same way that they've been doing for years and years and years and years. And why do you think people are rushing away from the party? There was an insurrection that killed six fucking people. Later on in time, people will be looking back on that going, you didn't do anything about that, mom? What about that, dad? That is if they don't die of something you didn't vaccinate them for. I and look, I still don't blame Capitol Police for the insurrection. But it's hard to watch some of these videos where you can just tell they're just gently wiping the desitin on their little insurrectionist butt butts. While they stand there all, well, gosh, golly, I don't know what to do with all these white people are coming at me. But I'll bet you some butter that I know what to do if they were black. Nancy Pelosi said if Senate members are involved in the insurrection, they should be penalized. Pelosi also revealed her list of congressional must-haves for 2021. They include silk scarves, sensible shoes, and a security detail. You know, we haven't heard much from Trump since he and his little birdie broke up. Tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> and we're not hearing much from his parrot either. Miss Kaylee, you might believe me if you're on Krakenany, has left the White House early to go sharpen the president's crayons before he arrives. Which is good. It's good for her because now she can walk around on the flattest earth in the country and tell everyone that the bugs are tiny, the people drive great, and there are absolutely no Cubans. I also hear with Donald and Melania moving there, the property values are dropping faster than his approval rating. Apparently, they're changing it from the sunshine state to the state where the sun can't escape, so it just continuously smacks its stuff in the fucking head with a tire iron. 
Joe Biden has announced that we will be re-entering the Paris Climate Accord. A statement was received from Paris, France, and they said, hmm. In Russia, Vladimir Putin has had his political oppression arrested. Alexei Navalny, who was, in, who was poisoned rather by the Russian government uh, two months ago, I believe, returned to Moscow where he was detained while departing the plane. Just think. After that warm welcome, he gets to look forward to blistering cold, bland food, and the oppression of women and gays. I truly don't understand the draw of Russia. I know I shouldn't be talking in this country, but, you know, that's a place where they require ladies to wear six-inch heels, but they forbid whistling. And they have shit for media, too. Not that we're really raising the bar around here in that regard. I think most news shows are actually here to scare us. What other reason is there for Wolf Blitzer to pop a stint every time he gets to announce an insurrection? He says, we didn't even see this kind of carnage in the, in the Civil War. Civil War. And that's true because Wolf was just graduating college and TV hadn't been invented yet. Well, thank the Lord we have TV now. You can catch my next guest in several films like Drilligan's Island, which you can also win in my giveaway. Stick around after the interview for more on that. After appearing on American Idol and starring in a multitude of adult films, my guest tonight, Kirk Cummings, tells me about an upcoming project that goes deep into some of his childhood trauma and also tells me about a little bit of the ups and downs of the adult film industry. Let's have a look. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Kirk Cummings, famed uh, adult film star. It's hard for me to not say porn star. I love the word porn star. I have a song called <laughs> porno. But yeah, ad famed adult film star. Welcome. Welcome to the Oops. show. Welcome to the session. Thank you. How are you today? Thank you. I'm pretty good. Just try, trying to get through this COVID shit without driving myself insane. I completely understand that. Are you staying pretty much to yourself kind of thing? And Yeah. As much as other than can. work. Other than work, yep. And same with me. I'm a massage therapist, so I have to be around people. So it makes the rest of my life, you know, I'm just like, no, I don't want to be around people because I have to for work. Yeah. Um, and so my friends end up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they'll all be watching this. That's funny. <laughs> so I'm excited uh, to talk to somebody who's in the industry. Um, and I know that a lot of people have questions, you know, uh, with the... Um, with the onset of things like uh, OnlyFans and things like that, people have questions. Lots of people want to be a lots of people want to be a porn star these days. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I would definitely think twice before you do something that you'll regret. Okay, and uh, so let's let's talk about that regarding OnlyFans. Well, let's just start with how how did you get started in the industry? Um, well, I was on that reality show American Idol and then a porn agent reached out to me and so I cut all my hair off and did one movie and ended up on the cover of it and so I figured hey if I've done one movie then I might as well do a million because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter like once you've done it you've done it right and here I am still doing awesome. it awesome awesome um so you say, think twice. And, you know, I think for any, any level of entertainment, that's good advice. Um, but why specifically the adult film industry think twice? Just because there's a lot of things that you want to do as you get older that people may not take you as seriously because of what you've done. And uh, a lot of people don't take porn stars seriously. I mean, I I don't take them seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so more, um, so it's more just, it's the same stigma that's always been there is what you're saying. Yes. 
Okay. And it's really hard. They need to like, it's actually a pretty beautiful industry. And I met some of the coolest people I've ever met in my life by doing this. Mm-hmm. So if people could only see that side of it, not the negative side, it would be, I think, a totally different story. That's a good point. I, uh, I'm i in the middle of writing a musical called Porno the Musical. And, um, and That's I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm blocked. Like at the, I'll, I'll post, I'm in a porno. Uh, it's, one, it's one of the main songs from it. And it's one of people's favorite songs that I do. Um, but it's funny because I, I had this little block of like, you know, where do I go next? And I like that, that, you know, that that stigma is still there and that that's, you know, and that that's a conflict because that yeah. actually gives me a conflict. Nice. Um, Not that there aren't enough conflicts, but. Yeah. Back to um, your thing about OnlyFans, though. Uh, OnlyFans has kind of changed that because, you know, we have actual celebrities now doing like OnlyFans. And so they're they're trying to make it cool. Well, not trying to make it cool, but it's like people think it's cool again or cool. And it's like, no, you're still, you're still doing porn. Even when you put your personal videos out there for people to buy a monthly subscription, like you can't, you got to call up, we'll call it what it is. So like, once you stick your foot in the door, you might, you have to go all the way in anyway. I mean, and it makes sense, right? Um, so I, um, I, I had wanted to get into the industry whenever, when I was younger. And then I, about a year ago, made the decision that if I don't fucking become famous, you know, by the time I'm 45, then, you know, I'm going to go towards daddy porn. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, uh, get, you know, leave all my hair on my body and, 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 and so, and I realize when I hear people saying things like, um, like I did drag for quite a while and um, people, like, oh, I want to do drag, you know, how silly that sounds to somebody who's actually been in the industry, right? Yeah. So, um, so when somebody uh, says, you know, oh, I think I just want to get into porn. Why is that silly? Why is that uh, limited in thinking? Yeah. Well, and it shouldn't be just like uh, you wake up one day and are just like, I want to do that because it does have its repercussions, you know, and mm-hmm. not in a good way sometimes. Right. Talk about that. Uh, just, you know, like family issues come up, you know, down the line when, you know, it's just like as life progresses and goes on, like you'll just find you run into problems like family issues or getting a normal job. Like I've been in porn my whole life. Mm-hmm. And I, because of this pandemic, I've had to get my, a real, a real job. Uh-huh. And it was hard to get one because my, sorry, my cat. <laughs> um, uh, because my work history, I, you can't put porn on a resume for work history, right. you know? So it's just things like that, that you run into that you re- you didn't realize at the time when you started doing it, but I would never take it back because it's it had some really cool experiences. Right. That's what I was going to say next. Um, you know, that's the, the scary part of it. Tell me some of the coolest things that have happened. So tell me some cool people that you've met. You don't have to name drop if you don't want to, but I like it if you do. <laughs> um, well, like porn people or actual Anybody. Fame? Well, I did a meet and greet one time and this was like when I first got into the business and I go in and our the person comes to meet me and it's Bruce Valanche. Oh you yeah, know, definitely. From, from Hollywood squares. Pinky boots. He wrote naked boy singing. He, uh, he was, yeah, he's big. Yeah. He was, so in that was probably one. Was wasn't he in Mrs. Ha- Doubtfire? Yeah, he was in Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm-hmm. Um, so when that happened, that's when I was like, okay, this is, this is something I need to take seriously. Nice. So, and um, well, that's good. I mean, obviously, some people have moved on from uh, 
Well, I mean, I sit and I try to think, you know, who's who's gone from like doing a lot of adult films to being really successful in the, you know, mainstream entertainment. I would love to do that, but honestly, like I've even contemplated quitting porn this year just because this year has really drained my just <laughs> I feel like my creative side of my brain and just that, you know, you know enter, us entertainers, we have that thing that, that yeah. quirk about us is what makes us likable. And I feel like I've lost that. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I get why that happens, though. And if it wasn't, I have to say, if it wasn't for uh, like getting my used to be live show virtual now then I don't know. I think I still would be in that rut. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's rough to not be able to get the applause. And, you know, if you live for the applause and if it, if it actually pushes the blood through your veins, then it's, um, it's really weird to be without it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what's next, what's next on your plate? Well, uh, what do you in mean? life or anything what what would your fans love to know what you're going to do next well i th the next thing i have coming out is my documentary oh tell uh, me about that so it's a documentary about my life leading up to uh american idol and porn um okay. it's pretty traumatic uh if you've seen the paris hilton documentary it's a kind of along those lines of like cults and stuff that children are grown up in oh gotcha yeah so i hope people like it it's gonna be on all streaming services hopefully that's really awesome do you have a title yet it's called i am kirk becoming an american porn star <laughs> hell yeah i and can't they, wait and they spell becoming like not how you'd really spell it but like my last name that's perfect that's actually that's super perfect well that's exciting as hell i hope you i mean like i hope big things happen and does it uh is there focus in uh in the film on that stigma of you know not of not being taken seriously as an adult film star i think we do talk about it uh she she's in it she actually is oh, okay. the interviewer she interviews me oh, uh so I think we do talk about it, but um, it's a lot more of the childhood trauma I went through. Okay. And it's, it's actually quite shocking. So I think people will find it very interesting. Well, I, I mean, you're in it, so a lot of people are going to love it anyway. Um, but, I wish. You know, adding some <laughs> shocking, shocking content, definitely, that's that. We don't, we can't get enough of that as yeah. Americans for sure. Well, awesome. I am so happy that you joined me. Can you do this some other time? It would be great to have you back, see how things are going, especially whenever, when it's coming out. Yeah, I would love to. Great. Perfect. All right. Um, well, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. It's, um, where are you brought, where are you, where are you right now? I am in Arizona, you know, the, awesome state that has the worst numbers in the world right now wow yeah well so yeah you are staying in a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah well stay safe um order in some delicious whatever it is that you eat to keep you looking that good um and enjoy your night thank you so much for being here all righty thank you absolutely Thank you so much, Kirk. We will reconnect with him closer to the time of his documentary's release. And to win either the video, uh, the Drilligan's Island video, or the snazzy pink handcuffs, mm, just watch the show. I'll post the three quiz questions on thesessshow.com on Friday night, and we'll pick the two winners on Saturday. Be safe out there. And here's your homework. Send someone a love letter. But, you know, it doesn't have to be, like, romantic. It can be friendly. Just send somebody a love letter because I tell you what, somebody needs to hear it. Somebody needs to know that you love them. I love you. 
Rest in peace, Dr. King. Black Lives Matter always. Thank you for watching the session again, and be sure to watch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night right here on YouTube or on thesessshow.com. I'm Damian Dane. Fear not. Love for us.